Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Canic Combos. And today's guest is Monica Cabrera. Monica, thank you for joining us. So here's the thing. Uh, I'm very interested in how you were able to pretty much speed up your professional career because you had a good mentor. Um, right. I'm wondering what kind of lessons did that mentor teach you? Because like finding one, just finding a legal mentor as an attorney, yeah. when you're a full-blown attorney, it's already a very difficult task. Now right. I imagine having one when you're 16 years old and yeah. you're learning how to become a professional and do like this is kind of, it, it might be a little bit of a nuisance, but honestly, like a lot of the work that attorneys do tends to be like administrative work, a lot of emailing, a lot of phone calling, a lot of just handling things from one place to the other place, not necessarily right. punching in like those legal hours. So you must have had a head start when you started your firm or when you became more independent from this mentor you had. So my question right. is, kind of, um, how was that juiced up? <laughs> like uh, you, you having an advantage over pretty much everybody your age, <laughs> how was that yeah. like? And then right. what was it like when you had such a good mentor like today it might be easier to find them online but back then like this is just recent one or two years ago that's when you started finding lawyer coaches out there but back then it was very difficult you had a mentor at 16 years old that taught you how to be professional and then your learning curve was very very short i'm wondering yeah. if you felt like you had a, a serious advantage in front of everybody else i did i felt that once i was started well it has its pros and its cons, right? I think the best part for me was exactly what you said, that I felt like I had a head start. Um, I felt like there were certain things that I didn't have to relearn or or learn from the beginning. I mean, the only difference that I had to do is I catch up with the technology because I'm talking when I, I was 16, 28 years ago, you can do the math. Um, so of course, when we were, when we were, when I was working under her, like I was still doing some things on a typewriter, for example, because there were some forms that were still in triplicate that we really didn't have, you know, a word processing the way you think of word today. Like my computer at work didn't have a mouse, for example, right? So it's just to give an, an, an idea of what um, the world was like back then. And I think that because it was like that, it also gave her an opportunity not to be so annoyed with the 16 year old that was asking her all sorts of questions because the world was slower. So mm -hmm. even though we were still producing enough for her to obviously make a decent living, um, it wasn't to the, to the extent that it is today. Like I don't have that same opportunity to mentor my staff the way she mentored me. I try my best to pay it forward and I try my best <clears throat> to stop and educate when we have opportunities um, but yes, back then it was different. So she did have more opportunities and I feel like, you know, the world works at a different pace. So mm -hmm. it was okay to have, you know, these conversations during work hours that she could take time to teach me. She also took a lot of time to teach. To, obviously at that time, I didn't know I was being taught, but we used to have lunch together every day. That was a ritual at the office. Um, everybody would bring their food and we would sit down because we shared space with some of her family who had a different kind of business. And we all sat together at lunch. And that was also a way of mentorship without me knowing it. I didn't realize that until later on that I was an adult, right? Mm -hmm. That I was also learning very important lessons during that time, not just about business, but also about the world itself. Yes. The, the cons, if you want to call it that, was that, I was an old soul, very young. <laughs> okay. So so in dealing with people, and, and, and of course, I also did a lot of closing. Closings are completely different than, like to me, real estate law is completely different than any other type of practice because mm -hmm. everybody's working towards the same goals. So it's a little bit of a friendlier practice than other things like litigation. So when I've done other things like litigation and when I started doing other things that were more litigation oriented, like family law and things like that, um, it was it was a shock to me whenever somebody didn't write professionally or whenever somebody didn't answer my call appropriately or, or things like that, because I had been taught at a certain level. Right. 
and I had been trained at her level, and she was a she was quite a professional lady. Like I I speak I speak about her all the time. Like anybody who asks me, I can go on and on about this lady, um, because I realize now, like she was around my age when I worked with her, like she was around the age that I am today when I worked with her, and and I get to see you know, how much she invested, right, in the little 16-year-old that was just, you know, there to answer the phones and make photocopies. But eventually, like, she's the one who got me my first notary seal. She's the one who first let me sit down and do a closing by myself. Like, she did all of that. I worked with her for four years. And all of that was thanks to her. And all of my knowledge came, you know, thanks to her. So, I, to answer your question, yes, I've, I, I felt that I had an advantage when I started practicing, but I also did have that, um, that challenge, right? When I was dealing with somebody even my own age that I was like, why do you, why do you not return my calls, right? <laughs> why do you, yeah. why do you not, you know, write your emails professionally? But, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm very, very grateful, very grateful for, for her. And then. Yeah the world started speeding up. Yes. I'm wondering, what was the transition like for you? Because now we live in an age where lawyers, everybody, every single lawyer that I've met, that I've interviewed, I told me, have told me, thank God or whoever is in charge that now we're able to do most of our work via Zoom, that we're able to yes. work remotely, that we're able to have people work with us remotely. And now, yes. like six months ago, the world changed again. Now we got AI and this is going to revolutionize pretty, it's already revolutionizing pretty much everything that we're doing. So right. coming from, coming from those times to these times, what was this transition like for you? Well, the, I think that all of us who've had, and I'm sure this experience probably is similar for you, but anybody who's been working throughout that time or throughout this, this entire time period, since I wasn't really practicing law back then, I think it was easier to do the transition because by the time I started practicing, technology was already better. Um, in the beginning, when when even like our closing program started being able to do more, it made our jobs easier. I used to calculate things by hand when I first started working, right? Um, and seeing that the technology, so at first you're very grateful for the technology because it's making your job easier. And what one person, you used to take, you used to have a team of two or three people, and now you probably have one person who's doing all of those roles because there's no need to do things by hand anymore. For me, having also being, having the ability to have virtual staff, not only does it help with your with us financially, of course, I mean, I think that one's a given, right? Um, because you can, you know, your virtual staff cost less than your staff that's in in house my team is virtual is um hybrid i have one person in house and i have one staffer through get staffed up at one point i had two but there's there's been some adjustments being made so now i have one um and for me i mean i love my staffer right i i'm a big fan of my staffer i'll say it wherever i go because what he has brought to the table is someone who's educated, someone who's committed, loyal, learns super quickly. Okay. So and you're able to assign you're able to assign tasks to one person uh, or compartmentalize, I think would be the better word. Like I'm able to say, okay, this is your job and this is your role. But if I wanted to do that in a fully uh live or in person um uh, staff, then that would be tons more expensive that you really can't do. So I think that having the technology, what it has done is given us the ability to to assign specific tasks to specific people and to have, you know, people to be able to divide the roles better, right, um, while still being productive and actually being more productive than mm -hmm. you were when you only had either one person or you or you were still doing a lot of the work. Um, you know, that technology has given us that advantage that we didn't have back then. Like, I, unfortunately, the lady that I'm talking to you about passed away, but I would love to sit with her today and ask her like, oh, 
what happened here, but there we go. Um, I would love to all of a sudden you became a ghost. We can edit that out, but all of a sudden became a ghost. My cat, my, my light suddenly turned <laughs> off. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It looked like it looked like they were doing an X-ray of you, um, but I would love for her to see like what what life is like today, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of um, how we manage our our office, right? Like how I manage my office, how I have the I have a you know a staffer in Argentina and all of that, like that how that would compare to you know she used to call me from she didn't have a cell phone, she would just call to when she would go somewhere she would line. call check her messages right. And I would give her her messages. There was never that, that instant, like, let me send you a text. There was no text. No. There, the, nothing. <laughs> she would call me when she would go to the other offices or when she was at her kid's soccer game or whatever to check in. Um, I mean, she she actually purchased a cell phone during those those four years. So I would love to have to see, like, I would have to sit with her today and say, what do you think of this, right? Like, what do you think of how we are able to email like this, how I can what's up with my with my um whole team at the same time and whether they're here or they're in another country uh when i had the two staffers i had the one who's still with me in argentina and we had one in mexico and the the girl who's who actually works physically in my office in miami i live on the west coast of florida so today i'm in port charlotte florida my staffer is in argentina my office manager is at the office right in miami and we're all able, I mean, we're constantly communicating. It's a, it's a different world. So I think that that also helps us serve our clients better because we're all more accessible. And again, that's a double-edged sword because if you need to be, if you need to disconnect, you need to purposely disconnect these days. You need to put the phone away. You know, you, you can no longer, I think disconnection used to be a part of life yes. back then because you didn't have a smartphone that had everything in it you know at the palm of your hand um so today yes if you want to disconnect you have to put it away in a drawer or tell people hey i'm i'm blocking this right like i'm turning everything off because god forbid somebody can't find you these days too you know <laughs> if my if my mom calls me twice and doesn't get a hold of me she's already calling my husband to see if i'm okay you know it's like because you're you're accustomed to that you're accustomed to and but it also gives us an opportunity to give better service to our clients yes to the people that we work with I could keep this going, but I want to be yeah. very much <laughs> But we can't. <laughs> Just one last thing, please. Please yeah. let people know where they can find you and what you can do for them. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So uh, we practice in the area mostly of real estate law. Um, we're located in Miami, Florida and Port Charlotte, Florida. So our phone numbers are 305-912-6609 and 941-941. Two three three five six two zero, and our website is mmclawandtitle.com. Thank you very much, Monica. Guys, if you need her, you know where to find her. Please reach out. And thank you for such an amazing episode recording. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Thank you for this. I really appreciate it. Okay, so uh, see you guys in the next episode of Can of Convos.